In the last video, I showed you how I built this. Today, we're going to try to make it look nice. So this is where we finished last time. The box is fully assembled, but it just doesn't look very good. We should probably take a little bit of time to make it look nice before we start hooking up the speakers and move this into a living room or a bedroom. If you've ever built any kind of enclosure like this, you know it can be very hard to get all of the edges to be perfectly flush and trim and square. So what I like to do is take a flush trim bit on a router and just go around the entire thing and trim everything down to make sure there aren't any weird edges sticking out. And you can see here I've got the flush trim bit loaded into the router and I'm about to fire it up and start going around the perimeter of the box on every side and trimming it out. The only problem is that the phone ran out of memory and I didn't actually get any footage of the trimming process. When I tapped on the box with my knuckles, I felt that it resonated far too much and I felt like it was making a ringing sound. So I went ahead and slapped some new concepts sound deadener that I just had laying around into the box. Moving on to the sanding, this is an important step. No matter how you plan on putting a finish on your box, you're going to want to sand out any imperfections, make sure things look nice make sure things are smooth. It'll make the next step a whole lot easier. Somehow I managed to get a ton of footage of me sanding the box. I'm just going to fast forward through most of that and move on to the next step. Hey y'all, I just want to take a second and pause the video and say thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I appreciate it. I appreciate every second that you watch my videos. I hope that you're getting some pleasure out of this. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're getting a good laugh at my crappy speaker building skills. But every day I get a little bit better. My editing skills have been improving slowly every time I do this and I'm enjoying it and having a lot of fun. And I'd really appreciate if you'd give me a like button, hit that thumbs up down there, give me a subscribe, ring the bell so you can get some notifications. I'm kind of new to this and I could really use a few more subscribers to kind of get my channel going and off the ground. Thanks for watching. Here's the rest of the video. I'm going to paint the speaker recesses black. I start off by masking off the front baffle and then I'm going to just take a knife and cut a hole around the baffle exposing the recesses and the speaker holes. Then I'm just going to grab a can of black flat spray paint and paint those recesses black. I think it turned out really nice. I'm a big fan of putting a chamfer or a round over on all the edges of the box. I think it gives it a nice finished look and takes any sharp edges off in case you're going to paint. For this project, I'm using a 3 8 of an inch round over bit on everything except for the front baffle. For the front baffle, I'm going to stain using Minwax Poly Shades. It's a stain and polyurethane all in one. This is the classic oak satin version. You just brush it on along with the grain. Before I brushed this on, I masked off a portion of the box near the front baffle so I wouldn't accidentally get some on the side of the box. It's really easy to use. You just brush it on and wait for it to dry and then hit it with some steel wool before you put on a second coat. I only used one coat. I was able to get full coverage on the first coat and there was no need to go and add a second coat. I brushed it with some steel wool after the first coat dried and it was ready to go. For the rest of the enclosure, I'm using a textured coating. This is called Duratex. It's available from Parts Express for about 40 bucks a quart and it's this big thick kind of gloppy looking stuff that you roll on with this textured roller. It looks a lot like truck bed liner from a distance but when you get up close you see that it's nothing at all like truck bed liner. Truck bed liner can feel like sandpaper. This doesn't feel like sandpaper at all. This has got a very smooth feel to it. It comes with a smooth bumpy feel. To me it looks a lot like the many of the OEM plastic material that you find in a lot of cars these days. It almost kind of looks like a rough leather kind of look, but it's clearly not leather if that makes sense. I bought a quart to use on a different project just to try it out and see what it was like, and I was really impressed with the results to the point where I'm ready to cover everything that I've ever made with Duratex. I was just using leftovers for this project. Like most of this project, it is just leftovers and scraps and bits that I had laying around. And I was worried I was going to run out. And so to make sure I could get full coverage, 
I went ahead and sprayed the enclosure with my flat black spray paint that I got from a can, the same stuff I used on the speaker cutouts. It just rolls on. It looks kind of weird at first, but when it dries, it looks really nice. I had enough to put on a second coat. So this is what it looks like after two coats of Duratex. And now it's time for the big reveal. I pulled the masking tape off the front of the enclosure, and this is what we've got. I think it looks absolutely amazing. I couldn't be more excited. Now it's time for the best part. Let's hook these babies up. Let's do a test bump. Let's watch these things flex. I muted the music here because it is copyrighted, but I've got some test tones so you can hear them shake. Well, how about that? <laughs> uh, so the the passive radiator had some pretty nasty mechanical noise when I pumped some low frequencies into it. I don't remember if that was a 40 hertz or a 45 hertz test tone, but that was the PR making all that noise. It started going like crazy. I've been doing some experimenting with it off camera, and I'm trying to find that magic point where the passive radiator is moving like crazy at its resonant frequency and the woofer isn't moving at all. I wasn't able to get any of that on film, but I'm hoping in a future video I can spend some more time trying to, trying to capture that and kind of show how that passive radiator begins to really start to pump air while the main driver sits there doing nothing kind of at that magic point in the passive radiator system. A couple of things to remember about this system. This is a one eight inch subwoofer with uh, it's eight ohms, 60 watts RMS. The amplifier that I was using had the ability to crank up to about 100 watts RMS into, into four ohms. And I was, I was gentle with it. I was not throwing everything into it. When I was modeling this in WinISD earlier, when you get below you know, 50, 45, 40 hertz, when you start getting low, you're, you go beyond the X max of the driver and the passive radiator. And I wasn't quite ready to blow it yet. There'll be a day when I, when I will just, just for the fun of it. I don't blow speakers off and I don't like to abuse my equipment. Uh, future videos, I'm going to be working on some grills. I'm going to custom fabricate some grills so that you can't see the, the woofers or the, the recesses. That's one of my design goals. Uh, fabricating those is turning out to be a bigger challenge than I thought it would be. But I'll get around to that. I'll get around to filming it and showing you some things uh, with that as well. Another goal that I've got for a future video is to start adding weights to the passive radiator. I don't really think that WinISD did a good job of modeling the passive radiator. It was kind of glitchy when I was doing it. There were some display problems that made me kind of doubt its, its accuracy. Um, but I will say this, the transfer response seems to be pretty good, pretty accurate. Above 50 hertz... This thing plays beautifully. If you're just listening to normal music, meaning you're not hammering away at, at bass enhanced music, you're not hammering away at the kind of bass head stuff, dance music, EDM music, if you're playing rock and roll, this thing is going to do great on rock and roll. I would not endorse this for home theater use. It's just not going to get low enough. It's a single eight. A single eight isn't going to get low enough unless it is one of those extreme... SPL car audio subwoofers that I'd love to try. <laughs> if any of y'all watching out there want to sponsor a channel and send me one of those eight inch SPL woofers, I'd be thrilled to build something for it and throw it up on YouTube. Nothing would make me more excited than to build something like that. But I've had a lot of fun building this project. It's got a few flaws. It's not perfect. Nothing ever is. And that's fine because this is a hobby that I enjoy. And my hope is that by watching my videos, you're going to 
pick up a hobby you enjoy as well. It's easy. Anyone can do it. You don't need a lot of complicated tools. I've got some ideas for videos in the future to talk about some just kind of basic tools that you need in order to get car audio done. If you're following my channel, you'll notice that I've got a lot of tool videos. I do a lot of videos on Harbor Freight because they do such a good bang for the buck in their tools. I'm a big, big fan of the Harbor Freight tools. Yeah, hate on me if you want to. It's just how I am. Can't, can't, can't affect the fact that I love a good deal. I would appreciate it if you would give me a like and give me a subscribe. I've been putting videos up pretty heavily over the last few weeks trying to get my channel up and going. And my hope is that you're going to enjoy the content and see something that you like. You know, Say something in the comments, positive or negative, whatever. I'm a big boy. I can take a little bit of criticism. This isn't the world's greatest subwoofer by any stretch of the imagination. But I had fun building it. And that's all that matters to me. I'm having a good time doing a hobby that I enjoy. And I would like to encourage you to do the same thing. Build what you want. Experiment. Have a little fun with it. Stay tuned for some future videos. Again, I'm going to experiment with putting some weights on the passive radiators. I have a room equalization wizard. So I can start taking some measurements and start seeing how it performs as I add weights to that passive radiator. That's going to be a really involved process. I've never really done that a whole lot. So that's going to take me a couple of weeks to get that video up and posted. So, hey, Thank you so much for watching out to the end. I appreciate you watching my videos and I would really love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and I'd be thrilled if you would say something in the comments, just give me a quick hello. Hey, I like your orange shirt, whatever you want to say. Uh, thank you very much and good night. And this is what my garage looks like after I finish a project. What a mess.